Hi, this is Dr. Kimberly Leonard, and you're listening to Incredible Life Creator Podcast. My guest today is S.T. Rappaport. S.T. Rappaport is a relationship photographer, creative journal expressive arts coach, and host of Life Picks Relationships Podcast. After observing, listening, and connecting with so many couples, S.T. is on a mission to find out what makes relationships work and how they can become extraordinary and is here to help as many couples as possible. Welcome to the podcast, ST. Hey, Kimberly, I'm so excited to be here speaking with you. Yes, so um, I'm excited to get into this and find out what, what it is that you do because I have never heard of that. But let's just start out by you telling us a little bit about you, where you grew up, how you started out, how you kind of got into the place where you are now. Yeah, so I grew up in New Jersey and I lived there like basically my whole life. At 16, I was fed up of school. And so I did my GDs, got my diploma from the government and went to study in England, where there they start college at 16. So I was the same age as them. Studied there for two years um, and then came back to finish my degrees and continue working. Uh, Regarding photography, that was something I did my whole life. I absolutely love it. I like view the world from a photographer's lens, literally like while I'm walking in the street, I'm like, okay, that looks really pretty, you know? Um, And I like, I probably got paid for it since I was 12 or something like really young. In college, I rented a studio and I did like in England and I, and I did pictures there. And then As I was doing it, I realized that my favorite part about it was the emotions, the genuine feelings that came out and expressions that like exuberate from pictures. So I went into relationship photography where it's couples in their ultimate state of love and connection. And then they choose their favorite picture and they hang it up on the wall like a vision board. Oh, wow. And they hang it on the wall like a vision board. Yeah. Ah, that's very interesting. So tell me more about that. Right. So, you know, let's say if you're a vision board, right, you want something in your life. So you will find a pictures or pictures, make a collage of something of what you want. So that way it trains your subconscious mind to look for it. It like even if you don't see it, because right, as soon as you hang up a picture on your wall after two days, you don't see it anymore until someone new comes into your house and says, hey, that's a pretty picture, right? So even though you don't see it, your mind sees it and it tries to find ways to make it happen. So if you have a picture of you, you and yourself in the, you and your partner in a relationship, in a state of what you always want, that love or that intimacy. Everyone has their own specific emotions that is really important to them. Mm -hmm. And you capture that on a camera. Literally has to be just for 10 seconds less for that, to get that picture. And then you have it on there. It's in your living room, in your bedroom, somewhere where you see it often and your mind wants it. And then even if you do get into a fight or things aren't going so well, your eye catches the picture and says like, hey, okay, I got into an argument, but I know that I really want this. So we'll work through this and get to that. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is so interesting and different. I have never heard of that. And I mean, I've definitely heard of vision boards where you put, you know, the house you want or right? <laughs> the vacation you want, <laughs> but never the relationship you want. And what a beautiful idea because there's, you know, I've done studies on what makes people happy. I wrote a book, Visualizing Happiness in Every Area of Your Life. And so I did a lot of research for that. And one of the most important things to, for happiness is our relationships of everything else. No one says, I wish I worked more. I wish I got higher in the company. Um, I wish they don't even say, I wish I make more money. They said, I wish I said, I love you more. I wish I spent time with people I loved more and, and told them how I felt and spent quality time. And, you know, people knew that I loved them. That's what people think about when they're on their deathbed. They're not thinking about, oh man, I didn't make it to president, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And that's why I love relationships so much because I really feel that when you have a good, strong, supportive relationship, 
all other areas of your life just flourish and get so much better. They do. And just having that support and um, uh, further on that, the people who actually live the longest are people who feel loved and needed, not just love, but they want to feel like they're a part of it. Like they're actually necessary for the community to keep on going. And that's why it's really important as people get older for them to either volunteer or be giving, given something to do, even if they're in their nineties and they're in a wheelchair, you know, they need to feel like they're needed. Yeah. Yeah. It could be like something small, like speaking to little kids or babysitting or mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. So anything. So I know you're going way past the picture taking though. So you're, you're taking these beautiful photographs with so much meaning, which is important to me. To me, everything has to have meaning. I do art. All my art pieces have a meaning behind them, or I do Mandela's where it has the essence of the person in it. Oh, yeah. So your, your photographs have this meaning and this wonderful, almost magical attraction bringing people towards the relationship that they want. But you go further than that with these couples. Um, I I have in your bio that you're a creative journal expressive arts coach. That's a really long word. What is that? (laughs) Yeah. So like you said, I loved this thing and I love it. Absolutely. Like this vision board thing is amazing. But by the end of the day, when something happens, it doesn't solve your problems for you, right? You got into a massive argument with your husband and you're not interested in speaking to them. What do you do now? How do you go about this? How do you continue moving on? So I was looking for more things, like another way to help the clients and the couples I was working with. And I didn't want to go back to school. I had enough of that. But I came across this thing called Creative Journal Expressive Arts. And this person who was telling me about it was like, okay, so the way it works is you write with your non-dominant hand, you do all sorts of art things, and then you get the answers that you're looking for. I'm like, that's cool. I like art. I want to do art. And in like a really meaningful way, like a way that helps me solve my problems, it was like way too cool for me. I needed to like hear more about this. So I ended up going to sessions by her. And once literally from the first session, I immediately fell in love with it. I saw how much it gave me and how much I understood what was going on that after a few more, I just went to go get trained in it. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got to it. And the way it works is there's two sides of the brain, right? The right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. Now the right side of the brain is in charge of the left side of the body. And the left side of the brain is in charge of the left side of the right side of the body, right? So they in charge of the opposite sides. The left side of the brain is also in charge of logic stuff. So math, reading, writing, the right side of the brain is in charge of creative stuff, art, music, drama, and it's in charge of emotions. So when you write with your non-dominant hand, you get direct access to your emotions. So with that like mindset, then you could like understand a bit more now where this creative journal expressive arts comes in. It literally explains what it is. We do creative journaling with expressive arts with the non-dominant hand and understand ourselves and overcome challenges and just realize what's going on Mm -hmm. so I'm just curious the art do you have to do that with your left hand too or your non-dominant hand (laughs) yes your non-dominant hand because the point of it is not the art piece for artists actually who do this have a much harder time letting go and realizing like okay this is not a piece that is going to get hung up on my wall it's not going on show this could like literally go to the garbage afterwards the point of it is just the process of it so that's why it's expressive arts right so you're gonna do however you feel like in that moment usually you don't think about it so much you pick up your paintbrush and you just paint right okay that's very interesting and it i'm i I bet you come up with all sorts of pictures. Like I, I have a one and a half year old granddaughter now. And so she painted her first painting. And to me, it's beautiful. You know, with her- Of course. 
But I'm thinking if I were going to paint with my left hand, which actually I often do, I sometimes, I'm kind of a little ambitious, so I'll switch. You know, it, it, what, everything I paint with my left hand comes out really different than when I paint with my right hand. And, you know, as you're saying, it made, made me actually go, oh, that feels better now that you said it doesn't have to look like art. <laughs> but it's interesting, though. Some people, like, can make stra straighter lines with their non-dominant hand. I'm like, I can't make a straight line with my right hand. Don't talk to me about making it with my left hand. <laughs> that is so, so interesting. And it was also relieving that it doesn't, you know, it just doesn't have to look like that because I was, as we were talking before we got on, you know, I'm an artist, but I do a lot of tracing because I'm not very good at drawing. And I thought, man, if I can't do it with my right hand, I'm certainly not going to be able to draw with my left hand. Yeah, but literally for this, you could like even do stick figures. It depends what you're doing. Depends exactly the process that you're trying to go through. But stick figures are fine. You want to just draw a picture of the situation you're in. You mm -hmm. could do that, you know make a circle and a line, you'll be fine. <laughs> so sometimes you're drawing art, sometimes you're painting. Can you do different things with that art piece of it? Either, so there's all sorts of things. There could be collaging, clay, um, what other things do we use a lot? Those are like the main ones, but we bring in all sorts like, like um, open-ended art sort of things like tissue paper, pom-poms, you know, like when you do like all sorts and just make an expressive board of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you usually a lot of times will make the art and then afterwards journal about the art because by the end of the day, the answers that you're looking for, mm -hmm. when, if you're, if you're just expressing yourself, right? Like you're just letting it out, expressive mm -hmm. arts, no problem, just paint your picture, okay? But if you wanna really learn more and understand something deeper, then once you finish your art piece, then you journal about your art piece with mm -hmm. your non-dominant hand so you could learn more about your, your feeling or the situation or whatever's going on. Wow, so how do people use this to actually, you're talking about learning about yourself or your emotions or whatever. How do people, how does this transfer into life? How do they use this? Yeah. So what we do is we want to use both sides of the brain, not just the emotional brain by using the non-dominant hand, but also the logic brain. So on like a basic level, what you do is you ask questions with your dominant hand, thinking logically. And you answer the questions without thinking and just let your emotions answer for you with your non-dominant hand. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you're in a difficult situation. It doesn't have to be anything major. You, your boss got mad at you or whatever. You got into a fight with your husband, let's say, right? Okay, so you're going to draw a picture with your non-dominant hand of the situation you're in, right? So like we said, it could be stick figures. It doesn't have to be anything beautiful. You're just drawing that picture. And then you're going to have a dialogue between your two hands to the picture, which is really a dialogue between your two brains about the situation that's going on. Mm -hmm. So you're going to start, who are you talking to the picture? So um, my angry boss or whatever it is, my mean boss, how do you feel? And you answer with your non-dominant hand, I feel angry. Why do you feel this way? And answer with your non-dominant hand. I feel this way because he takes advantage of me or he always makes me stay over time. And you continue the dialogue, ask the questions with your dominant hand and respond, answer with the non-dominant hand and just see what happens. You might be really surprised. <laughs> I bet it would be very surprising. Who knows what's lurking right deep in our brain stem in a deep, recesses of our brain <laughs> yeah we have so much logic going on in our brain and we live in such a logical world that every time we try to understand something and try to figure it out we have like okay but there's this and there's that and this friend told me that and social media says this and this person says that like you don't even know yourself what you want anymore right mm -hmm. so when you just let your emotions answer for you and your brain give you the answers that it knew the whole time then you'll get them mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about something, it's not really exactly your topic, but um, just kind of connecting the dots. You know, I know as a businesswoman, entrepreneur, um, I'm in my masculine so much of the day. And then I want to go and be with my honey and 
I have to really work hard to get into the feminine and that, you know, I definitely in a relationship, do you want to be in your feminine? And I was thinking that, you know, I'm probably in my um, left brain all day and then I have to switch and try and go into the feminine. So is there a way to get into that more quickly or more easily? I mean, would the journaling be that or is there some, um, what do you want to say? like mind or mental things or that's, that's the right brain, but you know what I mean? Is there some tool we can do? So when we're switching from the work day to coming home to our beloved, that, that we can be ready to be in that feminine space. Yeah. So I like that question. First, you might want to like one day just sit down and journal about that because there, I could tell you an answer, but Maybe you yourself have a different answer inside that is you just not coming out. So literally sit down, draw a picture of yourself coming home and ask yourself, how can I get into my more feminine state and see what answers come out? That's first of all. Second, I think with the feminine and usually the feminine energy is a lot of time associated with the emotions, right? So if you do anything with the creative brain with the emotions brain it'll be easier for you to get into that I don't know for sure um just that's my guess so whether that's art like you do art a lot or even just like on your way home do something with your non-dominant hand okay you can't exactly drive with your non-dominant hand like don't crash (laughs) (laughs) if you're like cooking dinner or something (laughs) Then, like, maybe you're, like, be cutting with your non, okay, also don't hurt yourself, but peeling or something with your non top and a hand, so that will access that part of the brain, or even, like, singing. Singing is that, also the creative brain is also that, so anything either with the non dominant hand or the creative mindset probably should help. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I love singing in the car. You know, I'm not a great singer, but I love to sing. (laughs) <laughs> roll down the window so everyone outside could hear too <laughs> exactly oh my goodness so um so just let me uh back to make sure i understand so these couples come in they you get them in this state of love and you snap this photograph they have this photograph which becomes their relationship vision board on the on the wall and then they're both working on themselves as far as doing this creative uh, journaling where they're doing art and they're writing with their non-dominant hand and asking questions with their, their dominant hand. You got that right. Good for you. (laughs) All right. Good. And then what kind of results have you seen when people do this? It's fascinating. First of all, people learn so much about themselves. We do things automatically. There's a lot of certain pattern behaviors that we're in just from either the way we grew up or things that happened in childhood that we don't even realize because they happen so often and they're just like who we are, right? So every time a person uses this specific word, someone might get triggered or anytime leave their socks on the floor, they just go crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And you could try really hard to like notice what it is. Okay, so I get angry every single time she leaves the socks on the floor. But if you're journaling about it, okay, so why did I get angry? I noticed I got angry. That's like easier to see. I see that she left her socks on the floor. Now, why does that bother you so much? Because when I was a kid, my mom, I'm like making up a story, yeah? My mom always like yelled at me for putting the socks on the floor and it was really hard for me and whatever it is, then you're getting to the much, you're to the core of the problem. You don't have to work so hard to every single time control yourself not to get angry because there are socks on the floor, right? You're going to instead work through that pain or whatever, like mini trauma. I'm not sure exactly what you want to call it from when you were a kid, heal that part of you and then be able to work through with your partner about your socks on the floor so there's a lot of understanding from yourself um, and things from the past and then there's also a lot of being able to understand your partner because you could journal about something 
with your part, like with your partner responding, like you could have a conversation mm -hmm. between your two hands with the dominant hand being you and mm -hmm. your non-dominant hand being your partner because you're not thinking. So your emotions are just going to answer mm -hmm. and it might not be exact, but usually it's really in line with what the person would say. So then you could understand so many more things. Hmm, that is very interesting because I think you're right. We kind of know things at a kind of subconscious level about people or how they feel. I don't know if it's connecting with their spirit or what, what we're doing, but we, we kind of have this knowingness that's not really always at the surface of our uh, conscious mind. And so it's really interesting that you say that, that, you know, that non-dominant hand can be that partner answering, but, but it makes sense. Yeah, I know that they say like in this CJA that the subconscious minds are all connected. Um, so when you write with your non-dominant hand for someone else's subconscious mind, like it works. So you kind of have access of to the unified subconscious. Subconscious, mind. yeah. So, exactly. And that could be actually very helpful in lots of areas, not just relationship. I mean, it could be helpful if you're a, a young person wanting to start a new business and you're like, Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, what would you, right. do? you know, um, I I've done exercises where I have a problem. I, I write it out. I put it on the table and then I sit in different chairs <laughs> and I pretend that I'm one of my mentors and ask them, what would they do? I don't know. I like that way. so much. Oh my goodness. I think I'm going to start doing that, but not just sit there and write. They'll write with their non-dominant hand of being that person. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. And you could even do it. i um, not someone, you know, specifically. So like, let's say you're running a business or you want to open up a business, but you don't have any clients yet. You want to open it up, but you want to know what they're going to want. So you could sit in a chair. Okay. So this is going to be one client and you journal about them and it could be just like any person. And then this is going to be a different type of client and what do they want and journal with a non-dominant hand like that. I really like that because you're getting up and moving into the space of something else, which reminds me, like, I feel like I'm going on a whole rant here, but <laughs> it reminds me of what else we do of like inner family work of like the inner child and different parts of you. And when we do that, we get up and we move seats to different places to feel that energy. So I really like that. That Yeah, it is beautiful. And it does make a difference because you do feel like, well, when I do it, I sit down and I try and get into the essence of that person. And then, you know, yeah, listen. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So next time try it with your non-dominant hand and let me know what happens. Mm -hmm. So is there other things that people do as far as um, creating that relationship? Or I, I think this is going to be used in any way. Let's say you have some kind of goal. How, how would you use this? Would you be doing just the journaling or would you be the doing the journaling and finding out, okay, maybe you'd be asking what action should I take? I mean, I, yes. I know business doesn't just appear. You, you, you can say, oh, I, I'm rich. I'm successful. I'm, you can do all your affirmations, but if you don't go out and open the doors, you don't have a business. <laughs> exactly. And actually the CJA thing is like for all areas of life, emotional health, physical health, business, personal, everything. And I just happen to specialize in relationships, but it works with everything. And that's why I like it so much because it gives you the answers of what to do. Okay. So I want to open those doors of business, right? Like you say, I think vision boards are great and affirmations are great, but they don't actually get your business open. <laughs> exactly. But then it's like, okay, so I know I want to do this how do I go and do this? I'm stuck. I'm not sure what steps to take next. So literally that's what you'd want to do. You'd want to journal about like, okay, what do I want to do? You might want to make a collage of what your business will look like and then journal with your collage, asking questions to your collage. How can I get this to happen? What's stopping me from getting this to happen? Or when you like run into a problem, let's say with the government or zoning, building something or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So how could we figure out a way to go and deal with this? And you'll come up with really creative, intuitive answers. Yeah. So you can use it for anything then. Yeah. Yeah. Literally That's a anything. wonderful thing. Cause, um, I know, um, 
when I was younger, I moved to Georgia and my family is in Michigan. And I remember as a young mom and I became a single mom pretty quickly actually, um, wondering what do I do with this or what do I do with that? Or how do I get help here? Cause I was you know, away from my family and really had no experience. And this tool would have really helped me, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It doesn't do the work for you, but it gives you the answers for what you have to do, like when you're stuck and just not sure. So it's great. Yeah. And is there any piece of this that kind of helps you actually move in the right direction of the action or you just have to do that yourself? It has to come up from within that momentum. So first of all, you always journal with like, how could I move forward? But there's also a lot of times the reason, there's a reason why we're not doing it, right? Because if there's something that you love, you're going to go and find a way and turn the world upside down to make sure that it happens. So if there's something that's stopping you from writing your book, from opening your business, from whatever it is, there's something that you're not sure about. Maybe you're not feeling confident enough. Maybe backlash from other people, maybe previous experiences. So you could journal about it in a way that will heal the core, the reason why you're not doing it, right? So if you are scared to write a book because you think nobody will buy it and there's no point of you doing it and no one's going to like it and you're just going to get tons of criticism, then you could go and journal about that and heal yourself Mm -hmm. through that like okay I know I'm going to do this and people are going to do it and you're great and prove to yourself all the other amazing things that you do and then be able to go and do it and you'll be like hey you know actually I really could do this you know and like Mm -hmm. right now get to work and do it nice and um how have you used these processes yourself um can you give us any personal experience of how you used it and how it changed things yeah so for sure right when I started it helped me a lot with my business Um, when I was doing that I was doing relationship photography but I wasn't doing it full-time even though I could have like I had enough clients and enough like things going on it was like a full-time job but I was still doing a part-time job just because like I was like holding on to something else and this made me realize like okay that's it like just like cut this off and go and do what you want to do because this is what you want and like I was able to really work through that like why am I still at my other job you know like there's really no point I absolutely hated it and like there was no point in me being there um so for sure right from the beginning and every time now I get into something like a bit difficult doesn't have to be major someone got upset at me or just like I'm like not feeling my greatest and I want to be feeling better my mind automatically thinks journal I have a method to go and deal with the situation it's not like I'm just gonna sit there and cry I mean crying is great I'm not like trying to put that down but it's not just like okay cry now I don't know what to do it's I'm gonna go and work this through so that I could actually get somewhere with it so it has for sure changed my view of life in general Mm -hmm. beautiful so my question I ask everyone what for you gives you the most happiness and fulfillment in your life so the most happiness and fulfillment I'll say is being able to be with other people and connect with other people and have them like coach them, I guess, or like show them how they can understand themselves better. Mm -hmm. Even before I got into this journaling thing, I was always like the one that if people came to me like in school, like with all their problems and stuff, like I would never tell them what to do. I always would shoot them questions of like how they could go so they could go and figure it out themselves. And I really got very like a lot of fulfillment from being able to be there and connect with people in a way that their lives could become better but once I came with this and I'm like okay they don't need me they could go and take this tool and learn themselves so it just like added to it maybe that's why I like it so much I'm just Mm -hmm. thinking about it now that's wonderful so now if people wanted to come and get uh pictures taken by you where where do you live or where is that just local thing or so before corona i traveled (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, and hopefully that will happen again soon. But I am located in Central Jersey, so like anywhere around there could still be. But I also do things um, coaching over Zoom because it doesn't have to be the pictures. The pictures add additional. You could even anyone listening right now, they could go and do it. They find pictures from your wedding or honeymoon or any sort of time where you were in that state of like, oh my god, I want this feeling to last forever, you know, and then just journal about that. So it doesn't have to be local. Okay. Um, and why don't you tell people like where they can find you? Like, um, do you have a website? I know you have a podcast. So talk about what services you have now, how you're doing it now with this Corona and, um, how they find you, where they find your podcast, what it's about. So much information. Let's see if we could get this all out. So if you want to speak to me, I'd love to just speak to you. I love meeting new people like you, Kimberly. This is so much fun. Um, you could go to Life Picks relationships.as.me and book your slot there and we work something out from there um you could find my social media life picks relationships um and regarding the podcast also life picks relationships that is very geared towards relationships and marriage and how you could make your relationship extraordinary beautiful beautiful well, um, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. It has been fun and I've learned so much. So thank, thank you for me. having me. I really enjoyed this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I have one last question before we get off. What do you make the most incredible, extraordinary life? What's your best advice? To make an incredible, extraordinary life. Mm -hmm. It's going to sound really basic, but unless you're actually following it and doing it, then it doesn't help. Like you could have heard it 600 times and you're still not doing that. And that is to be yourself and do what you want to do. We live in a world, there's so much going on. You don't even know yourself what you want. And you're like so confused and then like you're just never happy. When you don't care what your friends say, you don't care what your parents say, you don't care what your social media profile is going to look like because you are going and doing what you want that's when you'll be the happiest so i know that sounds thing but go live it really and then come back to me and tell me how awesome your life is all right beautiful well thank you so much sd thank you i love this yeah we'll talk to you again soon bye now <laughs>